All right, third graders, we're going to define the meaning of unknown words using definitions or examples. And here we are going to drag the picture to the matching sentence and then type the meaning of the bold word. I'm doing this on the computer. You will be doing this on paper, but you'll still be able to understand the expectation of your classwork by watching what I do today. So let's get started. Jessica was parched after gym. She got a drink from the water fountain. So I see that my bold word here that I'm identifying or defining is the word parched and I'm going to underline some context clues that I see. So she was parched after gym. She got a drink from the water fountain. Those are context clues that can help me define this word, okay? So I have some pictures at the bottom I can use to help figure this out a little bit better. So I see a girl drinking from the water fountain, a family in a van, a boy walking or doing some sort of exercise, and a person sniffing flowers. Because Jessica is drinking from the water fountain, I'm going to say this is the correct picture. And now I have to define the word. So the word parched means thirsty, right? Because she's thirsty. Let's fill it in and see if it works. Jessica was thirsty after gym. That works for me. Let's move to the next one. Chris ambled down the path through the woods. There's my word I'm highlighting, ambled. Let's use a different color. I'm going down and looking at some of my pictures and seeing if there are any words that go with it. Okay, so I see a family in a van, a boy walking, and a person sniffing flowers. So I can see back in my sentence, down the path, through the woods. So this picture, I don't see any woods. I don't see anyone doing anything in on a path. This picture, I do see someone walking. It looks like maybe they are dressed for a hike. And this person is sniffing flowers. So I'm going to say... It's probably this picture here where Chris is kind of walking, it looks like, in the picture. And I'm going to say that the word, if I fill it in, Chris walked down the path through the woods. That makes sense. So the word ambled means walking. Let's move on to the next one. Shane could smell the sweet aroma coming from the bouquet of flowers. I only have two pictures left here, a family in a van, going somewhere and a person sniffing flowers, I'm going to assume this is Shane. Oh, it's a little laggy. And then I'm going, so he's smelling the sweet aroma. I remember in ELA when we read about the three little wolves and the big bad pig that they put flowers on their house to trick the wolf into smelling the aroma of the flowers, the nice smell of the flowers. And we can see here that Shane is clearly smelling the nice smell that comes from the, the flowers, the sweet aroma that comes from the flowers. So all of those context clues help me figure out that this um, word aroma must mean the smell, okay? So if I fill it in, Shane could smell the sweet scent coming from the bouquet of flowers. The, oops a daisy, I clicked the caps lock. The word aroma means scent or smell. Okay, and last but not least, I have the Smiths are taking a journey to the mountains this summer. My word is journey, let's change it to a different color. I have one picture left at the bottom. So I'm going to drag that up because it's very clearly a family taking a trip or going somewhere in their van. And according to my sentence, they are going to the mountains this summer. So the Smiths are taking a trip to the mountains this summer would make sense for that word journey, trip. So I'm going to write my sentence. The word journey means trip. Okay. Or we could say to take a trip. Okay. 
It doesn't have to be one single word. It can be a bigger definition. So that is what you are doing today. You can go ahead and move on to your we do where you'll be cutting and pasting this out, not dragging um, and typing. You will be cutting and pasting the picture to the matching sentence and writing the meaning of the bold word.